And now the three of us are like, no, 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 no. Ah, ah. And I vividly remember shouting, we're sorry! Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm your host, Roy Wood Jr. Game time! Drop your shuttlecocks. It's tub time. I see you. My MVP right there. Yeah. I see you. Hey, ho, oh, oh. ho. What's your secret? Cheerio. This man has ripped this stage many a time. Let's get ready for another story from my dog, Mr. Sean Peck. One of the most important nights of my life. I was 16 years old with my two best friends. We were at a park on the river, the Mississippi River, in New Orleans, Louisiana, sharing a 40 and smoking a blunt. I don't have to tell you about a blunt. Southern California, you understand that word. Such a, they're so easy. Blunts are so easy. You take the cigar, you cut it open with the razor blade you got from the guy who sold your clearly underage ass the cigar. <laughs> usually for only 75 cents more. You get all that tobacco out of there, you refill it with marijuana, you roll it real tight, you slobber all over it, you run a flame along that slobber so it heats up and then congeals as it cools, then it unravels right there and the weed falls all over the fucking concrete. And you pick it up, you pick it up fast, you try not to get too much dirt, and then you repeat the process, you just roll it real tight. You don't need any more slobber, so you run that flame across it again. Whoops, you needed more slobber, because there it goes. Falls apart again, now you're fucking angry. Now your friends, your other friends got his lighter. You're all making sure you're getting all the weed. His lighter gets hot, he burns you in the calf, you kick him in the head. Say, so guys, remember, we're smoking a blunt, chill the fuck out. Then all three of you slobber all over it. And I'll individually run your lighters across the slobber. And now you have what essentially resembles a fucking branch from a dead sapling. <laughs> you have to smoke that. That blunt was such a piece of sh it was like, I remember your finger, you had to hold it with your fingers touching five separate points <laughs> to prevent it from unraveling a fourth time. <laughs> and to plug all the rips. And because I didn't break the weed up very well, in order to even get a hit, you had to blow into it first to loosen the weed, create a passage. <laughs> then light, then take a hit, and then release your fingers in a specific sequence <laughs> to create that carb effect. So, I, so as I'm doing the motion, I realize it wasn't really a blunt at all, was it? It was a marijuana clarinet. <laughs> so we were sharing a 40, playing the marijuana clarinet. When this grown man, stranger, suit, tie, hair slicked, just emerges from the darkness of the night, puffing on a cigarette, rolls up on us, gets about six feet away and just stares hard. And we are three very high teenagers. So our, initially, right away, we all three just freeze. Like we communicated telepathically, like, shh, don't move. He can only see us if we move. And then my friend Brian, seated to the right of me, who has no sense of humor, that's very important to know for what he was about to say. He goes, maybe he has a message. He meant that. He was that high. He was medieval level high. Maybe he received a raven from the king. But then my other friend Darius, on the other side of me, elbows me in the ribs hard and says, No! Just like that. No! So harshly. And I know I was high, but it was like I saw the word no! pop out of his mouth 
And I stared at it as it floated to what he was saying no in reference to, which was the man's balls. <laughs> which were on display. I don't know how that wasn't the first thing we saw. And let me be clear, it wasn't an accident. His balls weren't accidentally hanging out of his pants. No, no, no. It was like he saw us before we saw him. It was like... <laughs> balls okay so now and immediately the three of us are like whoop like focused on the guy's balls you couldn't look away you tried like ah the ball look at the oh my god the balls are so the ball because we still had young teenage balls that were changing and morphing every day those were grown man balls uh, opaque, like I've never seen before. <laughs> and we're just, look at the balls. Look at, ah, they're, they're different sizes. They're different sizes. They look like a before and after picture. <laughs> ah, they move. Ah, they move. When he breathes, they move. Do mine move? <gasps> ah, his move when he breathes. We are fucking fixated on this man's balls. And he knows that. And he knows that because the next thing he does is takes a giant drag of that cigarette. Gets a fucking amber of Satan going at the end of it. A real demon ash. And then starts going directly at his balls with the lid end of that cigarette. Directly at his balls. He's going to put the cigarette out on his fucking balls. And now the three of us are like, no, 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 no. Ah, ah. And I vividly remember shouting, we're sorry! <laughs> because my young high mind had deduced, oh, he must be an undercover cop. And this must be what they do if they catch you drinking and smoking underage in a park. They force you to watch them mutilate their genitals. It's protocol. It works, this sucks, please, no! We're sorry! But he didn't make contact, he stopped. He stopped like a centimeter away from his balls and looked at us with the eyes of pure fucking madness and blew all of that smoke out of his nose like a fucking dragon and then pulled a cigarette away, took one last drag, flicked it away and said to us, man, all you get in life is your balls. Learn how to use them. walked away like angry like it was our fault like oh sorry we were on your airing out your balls path sorry we didn't mean to be here while you were taking your balls for a walk like he had that sort of OCD like well I gotta show my balls to people three times a day or else killer bees will attack every major city in America I think about that man and his balls every single day of my life. I do. Because he showed us his balls, yes, but he didn't show us his dick and balls. Exactly. That I'm grateful for. Exactly. It was just balls. Dick and balls, too much. And I'd be like, let's not stay for this message. I had only told this story once to the police. But there was no dick. Hey, that dick was tucked away in those trousers, hidden from our young eyes. It was just balls, okay? Now think about just balls for a second. I know you have been since I brought it up. Think about just balls. Like, they're not that bad. You know, it's not that creepy. It's just, they're just balls, just sort of dangling. Or up here, scared. It's cold, I'm scared. Or dangling. They're just balls, they're not a, they're not a dick. 
fucking judgmental dick. <laughs> Staring at you, calculating its next move. Trying to trick you, looking like it's asleep. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then suddenly just up in your fucking face. <laughs> no, balls are just, they're just balls. They're almost waving at you. Balls are almost waving at you. Balls are like that guy in the neighborhood you grew up in. Who, uh, the guy who has Down syndrome who waves at the school buses every day. <laughs> hello, hi! Hi, hello, hi! Hi! He's harmless, that guy. That statement didn't give him Down syndrome, by the way. I'm just saying, he's a harmless, friendly guy and your parents let him mow your lawn twice a week. <laughs> hello! Hi! They're not, a, they're not a dick. Balls aren't a fucking crazy dick with its one eye. Staring at you. Dick, the, the dick's like the bully you grow up with. Always trying to spit on you. <laughs> they're just balls. They're just dangling. Balls are like a manatee in a hammock. <laughs> so chill. <laughs> Just hanging out. A balls. That's what he showed us, his balls. I don't know his intention. I don't know if he was trying to fuck with us, but I do know this. There were three of us that night who saw the man's balls. <laughs> Myself, my friend Darius, my other friend Brian. Now, after it happened, Darius was the first to say anything about it. He goes, why the fuck did that just happen? <laughs> and then he didn't speak again for hours, hours. Locked in a pensive cage, just sort of walking a few feet behind us, staring at the ground. Like, let him think it out, whatever it is. <laughs> and then when he finally did speak again, hours later, his first words were, huh, why does anything just fucking happen? <laughs> That man's balls unlocked Darius' love of philosophy. <laughs> which he went on to study at Washington University in St. Louis. And now lives in New York and is the chief technical officer at an investment firm because all that philosophizing made him realize, hey, there's no money in thought. Computers. And now he's doing pretty well for himself. Myself after seeing that man's balls and laughing the way I did, realized that I too wanted to share the gift of laughter and now here I am, a fucking millionaire. <laughs> I mean, not, uh, not in money. I mean, in laughter. You know, if there was a laughter bank, I have about a million laughs, I'd say. Because laughter's the true currency if you're a real comedian. But also, money's good, and I'm into it. So, you know, please give me some. <laughs> and my other friend, Brian, after seeing that man's balls, realized that he always had, and always would, love men's balls. <laughs> I bet he wished the guy did show his dick. He wanted to see a pair of man's balls every day for the rest of his life. He went to college in Boston, came out of the closet, met a man there, married that guy, moved back to New Orleans after Katrina. That was the first time I saw him after he'd come out, right? Yeah, that's when he moved back, yeah. Moved back, bought a, him and his lover bought a hotel, reopened it, it was a smash success, so they bought a bunch of other hotels around the country. Brian and his lover are actual millionaires. Because the three of us became better fucking men because that guy chose us to show his balls to. <laughs> you gotta look for the positive in life. A lot of people would wanna play the victim in this story. A lot of people would wanna say they were molested. No, were we molested? Absolutely not. We were challenged. The only problem, however, is now 
every single time I walk past a group of teenagers hanging out. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Should I go back there and give them all a future? No, they're all looking at their phones. It'll be fun. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Give it to us.